Hello everyone, welcome to Payload Capacity Testing for Weird Combinations of NASA's Space Launch System and SpaceX's Starship Super Heavy System. This is basically brought to you by my recent need in the Scram Spike videos to get a whole lot of fuel for the Scram Spike over to the moon and I needed a rocket that was heavier than either the Space Launch System or Super Heavy and I basically created this which is the Super Heavy Booster boosted by four of the SLS boosters and on top of it we have a stage built by the S2 stage from Saturn V and an extension tank so that's a 10.1 meter tank and at the bottom of it four RS25s with vacuum nozzles that can relight three times actually this whole idea was basically brought to you by as the boosters take out one of the super heavy engines uh, basically brought to you by the fact that Realism Overhaul included these special RS-25 variants that have these big nozzles, the ability to air light, and three ignitions. Now we have four RS-25s on this stage, but the core of SLS also has four RS-25s, but those are the regular edition RS-25s. They are groundlit and they get uh, better efficiency at sea level. Uh, but these have better efficiency in vacuum. They get 461 seconds of specific impulse in vacuum. And the whole system put together allows this rocket to bring 400 tons to low Earth orbit. But what if we just took the Space Launch System tank, the SLS tank, the 8.4 meter tank that you see on the SLS rocket, instead of having this 10.1 meter tank that we don't currently have in service? Uh, we still have the RS-25 vacuum additions on here, but still the regular four that would be on the SLS stage. And this results in a very tall rocket, as you can see. Uh, the first rocket I named Desperation. This one I called Tension uh, because of its length. Uh, though maybe compression would work too. But anyway, the lower stage is still the super heavy booster with the four SLS boosters on the side. But this time we're carrying the entire SLS core on top except with vacuum nozzles and the ability to air light. The boosters continually took out one of the super heavy engines and then we got this sort of wobbliness going for some reason. And so that was a worry for a bit. And we separate. Um, separating the main fairings at the same time seems safest as far as thrust weight ratio is concerned. But we ended up with two fairings stuck because the bottom of SLS, well, it sort of has bits sticking out and the fairings sort of get caught on those and that's what's happened here. I used fizz warp a little bit just to uh, speed things up and as a result one of the fairings flew off. I rotated the body of the SLS and then tried fizz warp again and it got the other one off like that. I wanted to rotate the body so it didn't hit the engines, you know, it fell down. But anyway, this was 380 tons to low Earth orbit because the SLS tank is a little bit heavier than the tank we had before. Now, we wanted to test the capacity to the moon. After all, uh, SLS is designed for the moon and also the whole impetus of this was carrying propellant to the moon. I had the scram spike around the moon and I needed to get propellant to it. So, going back to the desperation rocket, and this one has a 10.1 meter tank and so it is a little bit lighter. It isn't structurally made to carry the boosters on the side, which brings up the point that the Super Heavy would have to be strengthened in order to have these four SRBs on the side, as we see them go off and not kill an engine this time. Uh, but yes, uh, the payload capacities would be less than what we have here. And of course we are expending Super Heavy each time. So that's a little bit of a downside. You could reserve the propellant in there for, I guess, a drone ship recovery, it would have to be. And in that case, we would cut down on the payload capacity as well. Probably for low Earth orbit, it might be about 100 tons. I think perhaps at most 100 tons, I would expect. But yes, here we are getting to orbit with the 150 tons. And then we arrange for the transfer to the moon and then reignite. these. RS-25s happen to have three ignitions, and I'm going to uh, take advantage of these a bit. Uh, quite a lot, actually. For the longest time, we didn't have relightable RS-25s with realism overhaul, and eventually they had the ground lighting only thing, and so we didn't have earlit ones, but now we have these, 
and I even take advantage of the third ignition here because I ended the second ignition a little bit early, but we complete our transfer to the moon, there it is, and verifying that it can actually send 150 tons over there. So that's that, and now we go back to the tension rocket with its SLS top. Well, how much does this cut the payload capacity down to? Uh, well, the payload that we are carrying here is 128 tons for the moon. So that is what we're aiming for here. But yeah, those uh, new RS-25 variants are going to be useful. And I will take advantage of them. We'll see what heinous things I do now that I've got those available to me. I suppose they must have popped up in some anti-RS document. Uh, there must be some backing for these variants of the RS-25, uh, the Space Shuttle main engines, incidentally. And I didn't mean to release the fairings that time this low. Uh, that was just a staging error. So we might say that the capacity is a little bit less than 128 tons to the moon here. And that's translunar injection, that's a throw weight to the moon, remember it's not capturing around the moon, it's not lunar orbit yet. As we once again get two fairings caught on the SLS stage there, uh, probably a different engine section would help. One of the fairings decided to go off on its own. I tried to use Fizz Warp to get the other one off, but it was much more persistent at hanging on this time. So here, I'm gonna try and use Fizz Warp and hope that it wiggles off. I do some extra wiggling, but yep, that one decided to stay. That's fine though. I don't think it changed the parameters too much, and after all we did release the top fairings early. Alright, so we get into orbit. We do have enough to transfer, but I decide to go ahead and do the transfer, and during the time warp to our burn point for the translunar injection, the fairing goes off anyway. Turning is very hard with the SLS. I did put RCS on, but it wasn't very good. And so we ultimately had the engines actually turn us to the node each time. And there we have it. The transfer is complete. That's 128 tons to the moon. And this completes the more sensible SLS super heavy combinations. We'll go to other ideas in future videos. But for now, thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed this video, if you did please do press like, if you have any comments or suggestions please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.